Okay, good evening everyone. Thank you for your patience and so sorry again uh, for delaying the workshop. Yeah, thank you very much for coming down in person. We truly really appreciate that despite the bad weather and also the jam. So thank you everyone for making this event uh, a success. You see quite a big turnout today. So let me just quickly go through the uh, agenda. So um, the first presenter will be uh, from Mongo Negotio. So we have uh, Miss Nina here. Yeah. So we are invite uh, Go Negotio team over to start the presentation. Yeah. I can help you with the setup. Yeah. Just you? Uh, yes, over here. <coughs> Uh, after which, we will be uh, having the introduction to selling on Amazon. And we have a uh, leash here, which is our Amazon seller. So we're going to have a fireside chat, followed by a uh, one export team uh, that will talk about shipping. And we also invited uh, YIP, which uh, will help uh, any sellers who want to do trademark. You can actually look for them. Then before the networking, we will actually have a live Q&A. So not to worry, everything today will be recorded and sent to you post-event. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good evening everyone. I would like to apologize for being late. It's just so much traffic outside, and I'm sure you all can relate. Um, we're, we're actually three kilometers away from this office, but it took us 45 minutes to get here. Anyway, I'll start by the way. I'm Mina Karam, I'm the Executive Director of Go Negocio, or the Philippine Center for Entrepreneurship. Together with me is Aryan, one of our program's development staff here um, in, 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 in our organization, Go Negocio. So Boni Gotra is an organization that started in 2005. We're actually about to celebrate our 18th year this year. Wait, I'll do it now. So you can sit down. So um, the Goni Gotra Advocacy, who among you knows Goni Gotra? Maybe you've heard it from Facebook or have attended one of our events. Good to know that there are many people here who knows Goni Gotra. Goni Gotra was started by this man, Joey Concepcion. His motto or mantra is teach the nation how to fish, you feed the nation many life, uh, many lifetimes, which means that he really wants to promote the entrepreneurial mindset all over the Philippines. But um, how did it start? How did it become Go Negosyo? In 2004, President, former President GMA actually tapped uh, Mr. Concepcion, who was the RFM CEO, to be part of her cabinet as the presidential advisor for entrepreneurship. That's how it all sta started. But during that time, Mr. Concepcion didn't want to receive government funding. He wants to spread that advocacy on his own in his personal capacity. That's why he built the foundation Go Negosyo. And then after many um, years, he was then reappointed by President Duterte during the 2016 administration, where he became again the presidential advisor for entrepreneurship. Um, even though we were not part of the Aquino administration, we still continued on with advocacy. And right now, Mr. Concepcion has taken on another role as part of the president, um, presidential advisory, as private sector advisory council of the Marcos administration, where we lead the um, committee on jobs generation. So in the Philippines, as you all know, we are composed of micro, small, and medium enterprises. 99% of our MSME, 99% uh, of, of businesses in the Philippines are MSMEs. Only 1% are coming from the large corporations. And in, in those MSMEs, 63%, they account for 63% of the jobs in the entire country. So our role is to really promote entrepreneurship all over the Philippines so that you can hire more people and you can employ more people in their communities. Okay, so what do we do in Go Negosyo? I would just like to share a little bit about what we do in Go Negosyo. We've been existing here for 17, 18 years, helping MSMEs through many different channels and forms. One of them is what we call the summits. So through the years or through the, the entire year, we actually roll out many different thematic summits all over the Philippines. 
but most of them are centrally located in NCR. We tackled different teams where MSMEs strive, different industries where there are a lot of MSMEs that we can support. For example, in May, we recently had the successful Tourism Summit in partnership with the Department of, of Tourism. We also, um, usually um, every year, we also roll out together in partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry, the National MSME Summit. Because as you all know, July is MSME month. We also conduct uh, programs for OFWs. Are there any um, audience members who are OFWs or probably have family members who are OFWs? So we also conduct um, training sessions. We also empower mga, um, OFWs and their families so that they can start their own business so that whatever remittances they send their family can go to something worthwhile. We also um, recognize the era of digitalization all over the world, especially in the Philippines. In 2018, we started what we call the Sign Up Summit, wherein we invite up a lot of the digital platforms all over the Philippines. They put up the boots in one day, and all of the interested um, people who want to get into an entrepreneurial venture through the platforms can sign up right away. Like for example, if you have relatives who are bikers, who wants to be part of the formal economy, they can sign up as a bus driver or a joyride rider. Or if you have skills that you think would benefit other people, you can sign up to platforms like used to be before Govin.ph, um, Zenia. If you're, you know, if you know um, um, health, uh, physical therapy and such, so you can sign up right away. And we also deal with a lot of agri-related um, 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 enterprises or businesses. So those are the types of summits that we do. And our battle cry through the year is we want everyone to be, you know, upskilled or an upscale, which is yung Pilipinas at lahat. What do we do in Go Negosyo? This is the model that we follow in Go Negosyo. Go Negosyo believes that for an entrepreneur to be successful, they need access to three M's. And that's access to money, financing opportunities, wherein you can get capital for your business or even additional capital as you expand your business. Access the market because you know we need people to sell your products to. And we are very much um, I'm lucky to be invited by Amazon because we recognize that Amazon is uh, you know, one of the more, more established marketplaces here in the Philippines and all over the world. And lastly, access to mentorship. And this is what we do in Bonigosho, the heart and core of what we do in Bonigosho. We believe that you can gain access to you know, money elsewhere. You can go to banks, you can go to your family or friends, you can actually ask them for loans. You can actually uh, access marketplaces, not just Amazon, but we also have local marketplaces here in the Philippines. But it's very rare to have an opportunity to gain access to mentorship. And that's what we really do in the organization. In partnership with many different or uh, many different government and public sector institutions, we try our best to bring mentorship closer to people. Because we believe this is a differentiator. Sino dito meron ng mentor? Or naghahanap ng mentor? Wala. Okay, maybe this is an opportunity for you to get on board our program so that you can find your mentor for your business. Okay. So, what are the other mentoring programs that we do now? Aside from going to events like this with Amazon, we have this ongoing partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry. In 2016, when um, President Duterte won, he appointed former Executive Director of Bonigo, Ramon Lopez, to be the DTI Secretary. That is why we built a partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry to formalize the mentoring programs all over the Philippines. And this is what we call Kapatid Mentor Me Program. What is Kapatid Mentor Me Program? It really brings mentorship, access to money, and access to market to MSMEs in all of the regions in the Philippines. But unfortunately, in 2020, we had to shift online. Before, we used to go around the Philippines, we used to bring speakers, we used to talk to people face to face, but now, Everything that we do have done session to online. But we still roll out the same kind of mechanism 
of the same modules that we usually share and teach our entrepreneurs, and we provide them the additional support once they graduate. Through the years, we are able to assist all over the Philippines as of May 2022, around 12,000 mentees um, all over the Philippines. If you're interested to be part of this program, um, you can also um, um, chat with Aryan later or I'll give you our contact details so that you get to uh, you get the chance to avail this very amazing program being rolled out by DTI and Goni Gosho. Because of the success of KMME, um, KMME caters to retail-based um, businesses. Because of the success of KMME, we actually replicated the same program with the Department of Agriculture. So we have here mga agri-based um, enterprises or planning to do agri-based enterprises. We are also rolling out the same kind of program to our MSMEs in the agri-sector. And through the years, we are able to assist around 3,500 agri-entrepreneurs. Most of them are cooperative heads and farmers para makapag-avail sila ng aming mentoring program. Um, because of the success of these two programs, we're also bringing in mentorship all over ASEAN. In 2017, through the help of um, Jun Concepcion, when he was appointed as ASEAN BAC Chair, ASEAN Business Advisory Council Chair, we brought the mentoring program to ASEAN nations as well. So, hindi lang Pilipinas ang nakikinabang sa mentoring module natin, pati na rin yung mga ibang countries. So I won't do this. Uh, I won't. Um, I won't do this too much because this is something that we can share with you. But this is also supported by um, external funding coming from Japan. Okay, I'll skip this. But this is something that I would like to highlight before I end my presentation. Karina sabi ko we bring mentorship closer to people, and I think this is a very good opportunity for you to avail of our programs because this is very much accessible. Um, we bring actually, so yung KMME, we need to be qualified to be part of it. Yung kapatid agri mentor ni program, kailangan mo din ma-qualified to be part of it. But we understand that there are also other entrepreneurs all over the Philippines who want to be a big, want to be mentored by successful entrepreneurs. At the same time, mga experts and uh, members of the academy who really understand the business processes. So what we do is we bring mentorship closer to people by bringing it to the malls. We have this, what we call 3M on wheels, where we go in all of the major malls all over Metro Manila, and now we're expanding to Mega Manila, and soon in Visayas and Mindanao, where you can come in, you can register, and then once you're registered, you actually have a chance to sit down with one mentor, face-to-face, one-on-one for 20 to 30 minutes and you can ask whatever questions you like. Who are the mentors who volunteer in our events? Um, there are people who are experts in their field, but there are also inspiring entrepreneurs whom you can look up to. The likes of John Lukova, the owner of French Baker, Bernie Liu, the owner of Pen Shop, usually goes to our events, and you have the chance to sit down with them, one-on-one. -on -one. In this area, we also tackle the areas of 3M, mentorship, money, and market. So mentorship is part of the mentoring process. Money and market, we usually put up booths where you can come after your mentoring and then you can avail of a loan on the spot or you can be onboarded on a platform on the spot. Through the years, we have been rolling out this program in major malls in um, in Baranaque, Quezon City, Patsy, and all over the Metro Manila. We have a lot numbers ng um, ating mga rollouts in the provinces, but just last Saturday we were in Bulacan. And if you're interested, we have one upcoming on August 12th in SM Mega Mall, very close to here. Aside from that, we also try to bring mentorship online through our social media shows called Go Neko Show, wherein we bring mentors on board online to, to teach, and we also feature successful MSMEs through our program Quick Panalo in Bakakino. So again, that's it. Um, that's the whole Boni Gosho Advocacy. And if you're interested to touch base with us, you can actually touch base with Amazon. They can refer you to us. And at the same time, you can also chat with us anytime soon. So maraming maraming salamat for this opportunity, Amazon. And we hope to see you in our events. Thank you so much, Thank you for sharing about the contribution and the great Show is working on. Okay.
Okay, so before I start, I'm going to play a very short video. It's just one minute. systems for home use. Our hydroponic systems can Challenge for many new sellers 
or any new businesses is a tap on customers' acquisition. So what Amazon can do for sellers like yourself is we have we can leverage on the Amazon's global reach. So over here we have more than 300 million worldwide active customers, more than 200 million prime members. So for those who doesn't know who are prime members, right? They are people who in the US that paid for a membership in order to get the prime uh, benefits such as free shipping within one day or free shipping within two days. And one of the biggest sale event for Amazon is actually the Amazon Prime Day. So if you heard of it, it's one of the biggest sales event where the selling partners, like the sellers, she made a lot of profit. Yeah, this is where one of the biggest event. And after the Prime Day, right, the next tier one event will be the Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So if you are familiar um, with the US, Eugene Black Friday and Cyber Monday is also another peak period where uh, the search transaction will go up. Uh, because of all the different promotions. So overall, there are actually 22 stores. So when you start off with Amazon.com, you are actually entitled to sell in Canada, North America, and also the um, Mexico. So some of the sellers who are really mature after they understand how Amazon works, they actually expanded to Europe, to Middle East, Asia, and even uh, Africa. So how I'm going to introduce uh, Amazon Global Selling is through like, frequently asked question. So I think the first question is a lot of the sellers will be thinking, is the US too crowded for new sellers? So the answer would be no. So I'm sharing these two examples. I believe you have watched the Loop video earlier, the YouTube videos. So they were the success case studies uh, from Singapore. Uh, moving forward, I really hope that I will feature more Philippines success story. Yeah, but just to share, like these are um, very new like startup or entrepreneurs. They don't have like an established big companies or retail store. They started out as an individual and they managed to find success uh, by selling on Amazon.com and eventually they expanded to uh, other Amazon store worldwide also. Okay, so some of the question asked is also is Amazon.com only for the big brands? So just to share with you. There are more than 2 million uh, SMBs, so they are small, medium business enterprise selling on Amazon. And they actually account for more than 60% of the transaction. So more than 50% of the units sold are actually uh, sold by small business owners. Yeah, it's not by the big brands. And also just to share, uh, so Joseph here, he's not the owner for Argon 40. He's uh, based in Philippines, so Philippines Amazon seller. So you can see that uh, he actually highlighted one of the reasons why he decided to sell on Amazon is because uh, he himself, the emerging brand and the startup company, Amazon Global Selling enabled them to be on the same stage as established brands. So as long as you, your product is competitive, it's very easy for you to scale up without the need to build like your own warehouse in the US, you buy your own uh, retail store in the US. So also a lot of common questions, like a lot of sellers will be thinking, how do I get started? So over here, we actually have a playbook. So uh, I will encourage you to scan the QR code. So just to break down to you in terms of, if you want to get started, what are the three phases? So the first phase is actually getting started and registration. Second phase is to launch your store on Amazon.com. Then the next phase is to skill your business with brand building tools. Okay, I'll just stop here for those who want to scan the QR code. So it's a very comprehensive guide here. You can actually look through, it's sort of like a step-by-step -step to let you know what are the process required for you. If you want to create an account uh, on Amazon and what is the next step, like do I have to, how do I create my first listing, how do I enroll trademark, etc. So there are two upcoming webinars that are free also. It's happening next week on the 8th of August and the 10th of August. I will also strongly encourage everyone to sign up for this, especially for the 8th August product selection, where um, the presenter will be going in depth to share with you how to use the product opportunity explorer. So later I will also touch a bit on what product explorer tool is but I will not go into the demo. So by signing up for this webinar, the presenter will be showing you the demo on how to use the tool. 
for the next uh, webinar is on the seller account registration. So if you have issue, you don't, it doesn't, it, as in you are not really sure what kind of documents to submit if you want to register for an Amazon account, you can actually register for this registration clinic where um, there will also be a presenter to guide you through step by step yeah, on how you can actually register an account in Amazon. Yeah. Okay, so one of the frequently asked questions is uh, how do I decide what products to sell, right? So you'll be very surprised that actually you can sell a lot of products on Amazon. So there are over 24 categories that you are uh, you can sell. And I just want to highlight here in terms of what it means by the restricted product categories. So for instance, certain products categories such as automotive, uh, food items, beauty products, anything that is consumables or even toys, you will need to get um, the necessary documentation to prove that your product is actually safe for uh, the customers out there when they buy your product. Yeah. So this is, this is a, a very good guide. Uh, you can actually find all this information online also via sell.amazon.com. So just to briefly share, like earlier on, I talked about the product opportunity too, right? So product selection is a very important uh, task for anyone who wants to sell on Amazon. And I believe it doesn't, it doesn't only apply on Amazon, it actually apply anywhere else that you want to sell, like whether your business has uh, customers demand. So over here, we have the Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer. This tool is actually free for all the sellers who created a professional selling account. So for professional selling plan, I will also share later, every month you are paying 39.99 USD, you unlock this tool where Amazon tells you the customer's demand. So uh, the, another external tool that is also a paid tool is a uh, helium pen and jungle salt. So these are the two common like, paid tools by third party that a lot of the Amazon sellers are using. Yeah, so I will touch more a bit on the product explorer in the next slide. So how the product opportunity explorer works is uh, by keying the certain keywords. For instance, I want to sell a stainless steel bottle. The Amazon tool will actually tell you the search volume. So how many customers on uh, shopping on Amazon.com is actually searching for the stainless steel bottle. It even gives you data such as the existing competitor. How much is it being priced at? It also gives you a rating like 1 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 to tell you how much demand or how much um, potential this product is going to be. Yeah. So it actually gives you a niche. Like for example, you want to sell water bottle, but you're not exactly sure should you sell a stainless steel water bottle, insulated water bottle, or BPS. Yeah. So this is the level of detail these two actually can provide. And more importantly, these two will help you to identify the unmet demand. So what it means by this is a lot of time we also strongly recommend uh, sellers to look for your competitor products on Amazon.com read the customer's reviews. So customers have been giving reviews such as, oh, this water bottle is too heavy, it's too big, for instance. That's where you can come in to design a product that solves the pain point of this, uh, this customers by redesigning the water bottle to make it uh, exactly what the customers are complaining about. Yeah. And it also helps you to kind of like, uh, give you an idea of what type of new products you should sell. So it's a very powerful tool, I think. Then you can actually uh, scan this QR code to register for the product opportunity webinar next week. Okay, so besides the tools, right, there are also other resources to help you identify the right product, such as the category guide. There's actually a very detailed category guide. So for instance, you are interested to sell beauty products, there's a beauty product guide for you. Then also um, on bestseller list. This is where you can actually see what are the best sellers on Amazon. And there are also other helpful resources. So this is the QR code to bring you to the web page where you can find all these resources. And also very quickly, I think this is a very useful tip for choosing the right product. It actually applies uh, everywhere. If you are selling an online product, these are uh, the top 11 tips that you should bear in mind. 
So I'll just pause here for a while for you to take photos or to scan the QR code. Okay? So moving on. How do I deliver my products? So a lot of students will ask. So actually there are two methods on how you can actually deliver your products to the customers. So imagine when there's a customer that buy your products on Amazon.com, you can actually choose to fulfill the product yourself. What it means by that, it will mean that if your product is coming from Philippines, you will then have to engage a third-party logistics service provider to help you ship your product from Philippines to the customer's address in the US. That, that, that's what it means by fulfill by merchant. That the cons of doing that is you as a seller will have to make sure that you answer any of the customer's queries. So sometimes the customers might ask about your product, like is it safe, can I use this for like three years or etc. You will have to reply them like within the four hours. In the case that if the customer is not satisfied with your product and they want to return, right? If your product, um, if you are delivering your product yourself, you will have to provide a return address in the US yeah, for the customers to ship it back for you, to you. Well, for fulfillment by Amazon, what it means that Amazon, um, you will ship your products to the Amazon warehouse in the US. So once you are done with that shipment, right, whenever a customer's order from your store, the Amazon store, Amazon will be the one to process the end-to-end -end for you, meaning they will pick, they will pack, they will even answer the customer's uh, questions for you. Yeah, and you also manage the, pro the return process for you. So you don't need to worry that, oh, I need to find a US address for the, the customers. So this is a very quick guide on the six benefits. So just to highlight, like if you are under the FBA program, if you work by Amazon, your products will actually have a prime batch. So earlier on, I actually shared that um, Amazon has more than 200 million prime members. So having a prime batch is a kind of like assurance to the customers that this product is authentic, like Amazon kind of like, um, can categorize it a lot a lot of days and those who got prime that usually get a faster shipping. So imagine you as a customer, would you want to wait two weeks or three weeks to get the item versus I can actually get the item within one or two days. So that's how you kind of stand out from the competitors also. So if you would like to ask, are there any incentive for actually new sellers to tap on? So over here I just want to briefly introduce you to this new seller incentive program. You can actually read up more by scanning the QR code. So what it entails is uh, the program actually help to give you certain incentive for you to get waiver from brand registry. If you are a brand owner, you need to trademark your, your brand. Then there's also FBA and sponsored products and coupons. Yeah, I'll just leave it here for a while. Okay, moving on to the next hot topic. Uh, how much does it cost to sell on Amazon? So I explained earlier, in terms of the selling plan, there's actually two types. The first one is the individual plan. So individual plan is 99 cent per unit sold. So what it means that uh, by that is once a customer order your product, Amazon will take a cut uh, of 99 cents per unit sold for this selling plan. There's still other fees that is involved, like the referral fee, fulfillment fee, uh, etc. So the individual plan, right? will not make sense if you are selling more than 40 units a month. So I'm sure every one of you here, right, you will want to sell more than 40 units a month, right? If not, like, why bother selling on Amazon? That's why we strongly recommend uh, sellers to go with the professional plan, which costs $39.99 per month. So what this professional selling plan uh, entitles to you is, you actually get free Amazon account management support for your first 90 days. The first 90 days is sufficient to cover you to make sure that you have the knowledge to know how to launch your product. And not to worry, like uh, I've spoken to many of you, I think your concern is like, uh, would I be paying this 39.90 every month if I'm not ready to sell? So the thing is, Amazon will only charge you for the first month. Subsequent months, if you don't have an active listing, meaning that you don't have a product that is live on Amazon.com, we will not charge you. So use that amount, the 39 ID, to use product opportunity to and do the necessary research and leverage on the different tools to help you to identify what is the correct like the product that you should sell on Amazon. 
and also leverage on the support given to you by Amazon, the account manager. So you can ask them tons of questions on how to I lease or how to do FBA, etc. So yeah, so that's the reason why we strongly encourage like sellers to start off with the professional selling plan. Then there's also like a reference fee, which I mentioned, which range between 6 to 15 percent, depending on what product category you are selling. And of course, if you are using fulfillment by Amazon, there will be a different cost. So that's the question that I, I, uh, I can't address it earlier. Will I get free account management support? The answer is yes, if you are under professional selling plan. The reason why uh, this service is not provided for sellers who are selling under the individual plan is because individual selling plan doesn't give you the tools that you will need account management support because a lot of the tools will only be unlocked if you are a professional seller. Yeah. Okay, so with that, uh, I would like to invite Lish. Yeah, so Lish is uh, our Amazon, just a quick introduction. Lish is our Amazon seller that is based in Philippines. So I'm um, very thankful that she agreed to come here to do sharing with us. So over here, I'd like to invite Lish. Okay, so in terms of the fireside chat, right, uh, I actually prepared a list of questions. And uh, later during the live Q&A, right, you can also ask, if you have an additional question, you can ask Lish, or you can also ask like, the Amazon team, or even the service providers who are here today. Okay, Lish, I think my first question uh, to you is uh, maybe you want to start off with in giving your, uh, a brief introduction about yourself. Hi. Um, how many of you want to start selling on Amazon this year? Can I get a reason? Okay. How many of you think that um, they already have a brand on, uh, ready to sell on Amazon? How many of you doesn't really have a brand yet? Okay, thank you so much. So, I am um, Lish Aquino. I started selling way back 2014. Yeah, I don't have a brand yet that year. I started as a freelancer, uh, a virtual assistant, general virtual assistant. Then I hired a client who's an Amazon seller selling $1 million per day. And I was the only VA of that seller. And um, I realized that if I can do it all by myself and helping the client, I think well, I can also do it, right? <laughs> So I started um, selling Amazon in 2014. I, um, I launched two products which didn't go well. So it was two years of hard work. And eventually, 2016, I had my first ever winning product. And then, finally, um, I, um, 2018 and uh, 2020 was the best year of my Amazon selling. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Rich, for sharing. Maybe uh, I, I would like to also ask um, whether you can share your views on the opportunity of cross-border e-commerce. Because I guess to some of you here, you might not really understand what it means by cross-border. Because I believe some of you are selling domestic, that like you are selling within the Philippines. So maybe, Rich, do you have any views in terms of like, the opportunity on like, cross-border? Yeah, cross-border selling, okay. Um, well, for, for everyone, uh, can I ask them a question yeah. again? How many of you are buying from Shopee? Shopee. How about Lazada? Right? Okay. So there are so many sellers buying, uh, so many buyer, um, so many customers buying in Shopee and Lazada. It's as easy as, actually, um, selling on Shopee and Lazada is, I think, as easy as selling on Amazon. And um, how can I say that? Because if if you can sell locally, have you, how many of you experienced selling um, lo um, locally? I mean, um, online locally, right? You, you, there's so many Filipinos actually, especially during the pandemic, right? It opened a lot of doors for us selling um, selling locally, but actually online and. If you can sell, um, if you can sell locally, I think it's very easy for us also to sell cross board. Yeah, it's just as easy as opening the opening Amazon account 
and then letting Amazon do the rest for us. So I think it gave me an opportunity for me. It gave me an opportunity to um, sell, um, to actually establish my brand there. And if you have a, if you have, a, if you have a business here in the Philippines and you have an actual brand, I swear you need to start selling at Amazon because it's. Um, I think it's a perfect way for you to establish your brand worldwide. And actually, you're all very lucky because when I started selling on Amazon 2014, we don't have Serene yet. <laughs> we don't have Helium, um, Helium 10, which gives us an idea on what to sell on Amazon. Um, you're very lucky because before we don't have that product explorer. We, it was very hard for us sellers before to actually register on Amazon. Very hard. It, it, they need SOA statement of accounts. They need billing address. You know, it needs to be the same and everything. So it was hard for Filipinos to sell on Amazon way back. And now, thank you, Amazon. <laughs> thank you, Amazon C, Tristan, and um, Siri, for making for making it easier for, for making it easier for us to actually sell on Amazon right now. So if you have brands and you're one to start selling on online, this is exactly the time. <laughs> Best time. Thank you, Rich, for sharing this. So also just to highlight in terms of like why Amazon make it uh as in why some of the sellers find it difficult to register an account with Amazon. The reason is uh, if you know, Amazon's commission is really customer transaction. So this is one of uh, our key principles. We want to make sure that customers, when they are shopping on Amazon, they are buying authentic products. They are buying from like, legit sellers and not like uh, bad actors who are trying to scam them or scam their money selling fake products. That's the reason why there's a lot of like documentation required to prove that you are actually a legit seller, you are submitting the right documents. Yeah, just to protect the experience that customers when they shop on Amazon.com. And that's the reason why uh, Amazon has such a huge base of like customers. Because we managed to earn the customers' trust. So like what Leach mentioned, certain sellers they might not have all the documentation, like they don't know what to submit and they don't know what's the next step. Yeah, and during a time like I agree, Leach had had it, have a tougher time trying to uh, understand the information, etc. But right now it's during the time because we our team is here, even though know, we are not based in Philippines. But we do have a lot of like uh, money webinars, we organize in-person events and even have a community Facebook page where you can actually ask questions, find answer, or even reach out to us at any point in time. Yeah, so we, we want to make things easy and I think we also have the mission, we want to enable more Philippine sellers to become a global brand, to sell globally. Yeah, thank you, Rich. So moving forward, uh, maybe would you also be able to share with uh, the attendees here, the audience here, so what are some of the opportunities that you think uh, Amazon has provided for you or your business? Oh, um, a lot of opportunities actually. Uh, if I may share, Serene, earlier I met with my students, we were, my top students, we were 20 in, um, right, 20 members in, uh, in our, 20 students actually. And, um, well, maybe, and I realized earlier that uh, it's not, it's not actually about, sometimes it's not actually about building the best brand and selling. I realized when I was talking with my students earlier that the reason for selling globally is, is, to be, is actually very personal. Uh, I heard your stories and it's about OFWs. You know, I, we have a lot of OFWs in the Philippines and they're working in Saudi, Singapore actually. And they don't come home for their families. And now, those students who, who who are selling already on Amazon have an opportunity to stay here actually in the Philippines for good, because they can already work here in the Philippines and they have an online business here in the Philippines. 
So some of them are also parents who have little children, just like me, and we have all the opportunities to just stay at home. <laughs> to just stay at home. And um, right now, it was so, it was raining really so hard, and it was very crowded. Sabi ko, ah, wow, ganito uh, na pala ka-traffic sa Manila. <laughs> Kasi I was able, um, I transferred in the Bicot. B yung Bicot for goods. Sino ba ito yung mga taga-province? No. <laughs> so I was, I had, an, I had an opportunity to transfer in different places, residence, all because of the opportunity that Amazon gave me to have, a, to have an online business and I can do whatever I want, be with my kids, and at the same time, have a flexibility of income and time freedom for them. So that's what Amazon sell me, gave me. Thank you for sharing. So also just to highlight in terms of apply, if you want to sell Amazon, so there's a common need that you need to have an LLC. So just to also share more, actually anyone can sell on Amazon. You can be an individual seller, meaning that you don't need to have a company registered. You can also be a housewife. There can also be students who are selling on Amazon. So as long as you have the products, yeah, you can actually register and sell on Amazon. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, maybe leash. I think one of the uh, common questions that we also get from the sellers is in terms of like the logistic part. Like, uh, would you be able to share uh, or how you actually navigate some of the logistic challenge that you face when you're actually selling like cross-border? Yeah, logistics challenge. Okay, so I, I know that, well, when I was a seller, I, I really had a hard time understanding if I need a company first and if I need an import and export permit. Would that also be your question, right? Because we don't have an, it's very hard to get an importation and export importation permit in the Philippines. So it was really challenging for me back then. But I realized that you don't need those registrations. You don't even need the, I'm sorry, you know, the go you don't show you. <laughs> I'm just joking. But um, we, we, sorry. <laughs> so I realized that I don't really need DDI before and set to be able to sell in the Philippines. Just what Sirene said. <laughs> That's just what Sirene said. You can actually establish your brand selling on Amazon without those things at first. Okay, at first. But eventually you need to because, of course, you need to pay taxes and everything. So, um, so what happened was uh, I shipped from China to US in order for me to um, ship cheaper. Actually, cheaper and um, they take care of the logistic part. But I think um, we have a guest later. <laughs> I'm looking at the shipping team who will uh, who will help us finally shipping from the Philippines globally. So I think right now the challenge actually is to ship locally and to abroad. But in terms of local uh, shipping from China to Philippines, it's very easy. Okay, Nish. So maybe also just to ask, like, um, has how has uh, FBA, like fulfillment by Amazon, uh, help you in terms of like selling to other countries? Because uh, I understand that a lot of the sellers will only ask us like, what does fulfillment by Amazon mean, or why is FBA? So maybe uh, I get Nish to share in terms of like her experience in using the FBA service. Uh, thank you. Um, MD is actually a sense for me because uh, it makes my business automated. I've been looking for a business that is passive and automated long way before I met it. I, I learned about FBA and MD makes my life so easy because even if I'm here in the Philippines and um, my, I'm selling in the US, they are the ones who ship, take back and ship my products globally. So, I think it would really be easy to use um, Amazon if you're if you want a more flexible business. So yes, if you're choosing to sell on Amazon, I think it's best to choose FBA. Okay, yeah, thank you. So maybe just one last question. Well, uh, do you have one piece of advice you would like to share with the audience here who wants to sell on Amazon or who wants to go cross border? 
Yeah. <laughs> so, if you want to go cross border and actually sell on Amazon, I really think that um, you simply do it. <laughs> Don't overthink. And um, you know, um, the the best way to do it is to be prepared to actually study. Um, what you want and begin with an end in mind because when when I had a client I, I've been looking for three things is that I can do the business online have a business in a passive way and the third one is I can make millions of dollars because every we have we have a lot of business opportunities online right and somehow there are other business online that we can make it, you know, um, we can run it passively. Meaning we don't have to do um, everything. We don't have to be online everything to run the business. But um, but it's not scalable. So I um, when I started selling on Amazon, I was always looking for the three things. And Amazon is the well, the only business that can give me that um, the three criteria. Passive, you can have it online, and you can make and you can scale it for million dollars. So if you're looking for that business, I think this business is right for you. So shop right in. Thank you so much for your time, Lish. Yeah, I think that's the end of the panel discussion. Yeah, thank you, Lish. We'll move on to the next uh, presentation. So we are now we have a Q&A segment. So that's when if you have any questions for Lish or, or us, you can actually ask. Okay, so may I uh, invite the one export team, like shipping team, to share more about shipping? I think this is also a hot topic because uh, a lot of sellers will be very interested to understand more about how to ship your products from the Philippines to the US. Okay, so good evening everybody. So uh, my name is Jaime, I am from One Export, and we have our logistics service called Shipping. Um, this evening I will be discussing uh, the basics of shipping. So this can be for shipping in general, and then I will discuss how it changes when you ship to Amazon. So in terms of shipping, you have two options, especially if you're going to be sending items uh, as a commercial item, or let's say for your business. So the first one, is an air courier service. This is very, this is basically um, synonymous with DHL, UPS, FedEx. That's an air courier service. So, in terms of sending items, we recommend that these are low volume and low value items. Um, when we describe low volume items, um, it honestly depends on what kind of product it is. So, let's say if you are sending um, canned fish, canned tuna. Low volume will be maybe around 10 to 15 pieces. That should be okay. That can be declared as a personal item. But if it is around 15 laptops, then obviously that would be a commercial item. So the volume, when you, when you say it's low volume, it depends on what you are sending. The second option that we have is also forwarding. So these are the opposite. High volume, high value. Um, and these are automatically considered as commercial shipments. So you have options of sending. It can be sent via air as well, but since this is, this is sent in bulk, it's an air freight or air freight forwarding. You can send via sea, um, whether it be a less than container load. So these, these are in, let's say, one to two cubic meters, up to five cubic meters. Uh, but you can also send in full container loads, such as 20 footers and 40 footers. So in terms of sending abroad, um, those are your options. So in terms of our service, uh, we, the first one I'll be tackling is Shipit Express. So this Shipit Express is our air courier service. Generally, when you send items abroad, um, you don't need to provide any documentations uh, because these are declared as personal or they're declared as samples. 
Uh, what's important is that we also double check as well if these items are allowed in the destination country. So a lot of the times we get personal inquiries that uh, some of our clients, they want to send uh, corned beef to the US, but even Australia. But those countries, they restrict, or I think they, I think they restrict it, um, sending beef or meat items. But then, um, if you are sending uh, maybe fish, that's allowed. Or, but if you're going to be sending food items in general to Europe, uh, Europe is quite strict with food items in general. So it also depends per country, but what's important is we'll advise you beforehand and before you want to ship. Uh, we also ensure that if ever there are duties and taxes that are, that are applicable, um, as, as, what's this? as protocol, it's always charged to the recipient. So if you are sending to a loved one or um, to a relative, uh, and it, it is charged duties and taxes, um, they'll be the ones to pay for it. And what's important as well is, let's say any items that would need to have um, local FDA, such as food, cosmetic, uh, drug items, they need to have a local FDA uh, before you send it abroad. This is to prevent um, homemade products or items that haven't been really checked uh, to prevent, let's say, contamination in the destination country. That's why we all, uh, a lot of our customers, a lot of our clients, when they send personal items, the main inquiry that we get is they want to send dried fish. Damgit, pusit, those kinds of items. That's the reality. But then, it's really, we want to prevent it because if that item is uh, detected by the U.S. Customs, the whole shipment may be, might be compromised and they can either destroy the package or send it back. So everything, uh, the whole shipment is, um, you know, it, it, it won't push through. Um, generally, how, she, how ex express shipments are priced, so a lot of our clients are not familiar with the concept of chargeable weight. So chargeable weight is the comparison of volumetric weight and actual weight, and the chargeable weight is whichever is higher. So I'll give examples for your, um, so that it's easier to understand. So let's say we have a small box with these dimensions. If you want to compute for the chargeable weight of a box in centimeters, it's length times width times height, all over 5,000. So that comes out as the weight. So let's say for these dimensions, uh, five kilos comes out, uh, the five kilo volumetric weight comes out. But the actual item that you're sending, it's, uh, it's uh, books, uh, clothes, a lot of personal items, it comes out at 20 kilos. So you will be charged 20 kilos. For the second example, you have a much larger box where the volumetric weight is 20, uh, 25 kilograms. But the contents, are, I, I, the, the example I always use is a parole, so, or a Christmas lantern. So if you're sending a parole, it's very light, the, the actual weight comes out at 5 kilograms. Because of the, 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 because of the dimensions of the box, you'll be charged 25 kilograms. So when sending via air, you're either paying for the weight or the space that the box takes up in the, uh, in the airplane. So some basic do's and don'ts of shipping, something that I just want to emphasize is the use of double-walled boxes. It's important uh, because sometimes some of our clients buy uh, these bag buying boxes from bookstores, which are quite flimsy, which are useful if you are, if you are bringing it as a check-in luggage when you're traveling. But if you are sending it via air courier service, it will uh, go through a lot of handling points. It will transfer from truck to truck, from uh, one plane to another, it's, it will be prone to damage. So make sure that your boxes are of good quality. Uh, we have another service which we uh, call Ship It Fulfillment. This is one of our newer services. Um, this is our sort of budget option of sending via sea. Um, the easiest way to explain it is from our, it, it, your items will be sent from our warehouse here in the Philippines to our warehouse in the United States. Um, and then all the import licensing fee and the export licensing fee is already covered. What's not covered is the final delivery, and if you want to arrange, uh, if you want us to arrange pickup, that's not yet covered. Um, so we currently price it at three hundred and fifty dollars per cubic meter, uh, and the way that this works is um, the easiest example to use is a carpool. So if, um, or let's say. It's like a jeep. If you're riding a jeep here in the Philippines, uh, the jeep won't leave if hindi po na yung jeep if it's not full. So we we have a container under one export, 
we wait for enough clients to fill up the container, and once it's filled up, um, all of you sort of ride together into our uh, warehouse in the US. So at least you cut down on cost, you cut down on licensing fee, since usually if you send via LCL, um, it's, a lic it's a licensing fee per cubic meter per shipment, at least here. The whole container is under one license, it's under us, and it's all under one documentation fee. So you get to save up on all of these additional fees and it's split between all of the, um, all of the shippers. Uh, the context that we have to take into consideration is that this takes a lot of time. Again, it depends on how many people can, um, uh, can join the container, it depends on the availability, availability of the space of the container and availability of the shipping. Uh, but basically that's how our, our stupid uh, fulfillment service works. So once it gets to our warehouse, you can arrange the pickup yourself, you can arrange delivery to maybe an Amazon warehouse, or if you have a client who wants to receive a bulk shipment, we can also arrange that for you. Our warehouse is located in California, but we're also looking to expand into the East Coast and the central area of America, so uh, New York, Texas, just so that we can cover all bases. So ship it forwarding, this is the basic um, way of sending uh, large bulk shipments. So as what I said a while ago, you can send it via air or via sea. It can be a full container or a less than container load. We also have different services, such as um, if you need stickering, so if you have a lot of products but you don't really have the manpower um, to sort of change the labels and everything, we have a warehouse team that can do that for you. Or let's say if you are, um, if you have different items which you want to send abroad from different suppliers, different manufacturers, we can do the receiving for that and we can put it into one container for you. So it's consolidating all your items. Um, but one thing to take note of is for commercial shipments, so for forwarding shipments, whether it be via sea or via air, these are considered as um, commercial shipments. So you would need uh, further documentation, um, such as a local export license and the import license in the United States. Your items, if they're food items, need to, uh, if they're food or drug items, they need to comply with the local FDA in the US and the, and the FDA here in the Philippines, and there could be additional supporting documents. The easiest way for me to maybe explain this to you is if you are traveling to the United States, for you to exit the Philippines, you need your passport. So your passport is your export license. For you to enter the U.S., you need your visa, and that is your import license. And then, so, in terms of Amazon, um, there just might be a few technical issues. Sometimes it's, uh, to be honest, with when they're trying to ship, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, we just really want to limit the risk. Uh, but basically, Amazon shipment, since they are going to an Amazon warehouse, and U.S. customs will see that it is going to an Amazon warehouse, they will consider it a commercial shipment. Whether it be low volume, whether it be low value, they could consider it commercial. So there is a possibility that it will be charged duties and taxes. Um, and then if you are sending food items or um, drugs or cosmetics or cleaning items, it would need to be registered in the FDA of the United States. Um, so there are additional documents such as the material safety data sheet, uh, which is important when you export to really see if it can be transported. For non-food items, these are generally easier to ship out, but there are some um, small technicalities, such as let's say wooden products, uh, because they want to make sure that these aren't raw materials. You need to declare if it's uh, been varnished, it's been oiled, or if it's if it hasn't been, it needs to be fumigated so that it, uh, there's proof that it doesn't necessarily contaminate or bring anything in. Uh, when it's sent to the United States. And since it, it could be considered a commercial shipment, they might look for an importer on record. Um, so I, I think what was mentioned a while ago is that it's quite difficult to get an import license in the US, um, and this could be one of the pain points of shipping. But for us with ShipIt, in terms of how we can help you, uh, we want to tackle all of these sort of problems which, might happen, which you might encounter. So the first thing that we can assist with is documentation and compliance. The second is assisting with uh, being the important record. And the third is basically for marketing. It's, we can assist with bulk shipping. So, oh, sorry. so in terms of compliance, so we assist with US FDA for food. 
where as long as you have your local compliances, um, generally everything is okay and you have the proper labeling requirements for the US. It's a very fast process in getting the US FDA. It takes almost around three days to one week. For US FDA, for non-food items, it needs to undergo assessment. So when we checked with our uh, compliance team earlier, they mentioned that generally cosmetic items do not need a US FDA. But it needs to undergo assessment because uh, the US is quite strict with the ingredients list. So sometimes there's an ingredient, uh, let's say if, you're, if you have a soap, if you want to sell soap in the United States, there could be an ingredient there which would make it uh, be considered as a drug. And that's when you need a US FDA. So they're quite strict with that, especially if uh, you have any lightening soap or those cosmetic products which, uh, you know, mean have those chemical benefits, it could be considered as a drug. Uh, and for local compliances here in the Philippines, if you need assistance with that, you can also assist. So getting your LTO, um, getting the FDA in the Philippines, you have that service. So for express shipments, uh, so what I mentioned, with uh, an importer record is needed. So one export and ship it, we have an import license in the US. So that kind of solves the problem is, let's say, if, if the U.S. Customs asks for an important record, it could be under us. And if they do decide to um, charge any duties and taxes, it will be billed to us first, and then we can just bill it uh, straight to you, um, so that at least the shipment won't be compromised. Um, and for U.S. FDA, we can assist them in terms of with the food items because we have a food facility registration number. Um, so if you are sending a food item to the U.S., we can put it under our food facility registration number initially, but then it's quite limited into uh, one product per shipment because the FFRN or the, uh, the FFRN is um, limited to one product. So if you're sending, let's say, chips, sending cookies, sending another thing, we'll have to break in it into different shipments. We also do package quality checking. Again, um, we'll want to advise you if you're going to be sending an item if it has the proper box, if we need to rebox it, if we need to put extra bubble wrap, just to ensure that no damage um, happens during transit, I will advise you right away so that you know you guys can make the decision before anything happens. Uh, and the last one is uh, basically bulk shipment. So in terms of our service for fulfillment and for forwarding, again we have that you we have that option of using our license. Since if you want to be sending in bulk looking at sending via sea or sending via air freight forwarding is the, op is the option you can do. We have an export license to release it here in the Philippines. We also have an import license to be the receiver in the US. And then we can just arrange the delivery um, to whichever destination, whether it be an Amazon warehouse or let's say if, you have a, if you're sending directly to, to a client. Uh, sorry. Uh, basic items not allowed, so a lot of these items are just either illegal or prohibited or prohibited and we need um, special um, special rates in terms of shipping. So this this one doesn't necessarily fall under our uh, options of sending via fulfillment and if it's, if it's going to be sent via air, um, most of these won't be allowed in general. So let's say example of power banks or items with high alcohol content, so cologne, perfume, they would need special rates to be uh, shipped out in a container. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I'll be show, um, you can just, if you have any questions, uh, please you can email me, hi at one export or ship it at one export.com. Uh, for this registration form, um, it's an old link, but we have a newer QR code here in the site, so you can ask us for any questions, and uh, if, if you can do so, please think of us not just as a service provider, but as a service partner. Uh, in terms of shipping, I understand that it's a very, um, it's, it's a scary thing to do, but then as much as possible, we'll advise you of, in terms of all the risks, everything that could, that could happen, um, especially if you want to grow your business, it's understanding um, everything about it and giving you guys a bit more visibility in what you're getting into. So in terms of, um, you know, lessening the cost of shipping, bring your items there, growing your business, we'll be happy to help. So feel free to just email us and then approach us there. Um, we just have a small station there in the side later. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Henry. So uh, next, can we invite the uh, accolade team over? Yeah, everyone, if you are tired, do you want to stand up and stretch first? Yeah, about this set up. <laughs> if you need a stretch, you can just stand up first. So I am attorney Josephine Go. I am the managing partner of Athlete IP, and I am also the head of our U.S. trademark department. So I am excited to discuss or to present an overview of our company because, as you may know, it is vital to have a pending trademark or registered trademark in the USPTO. So please feel free to to take any inquiries um, on our booth later on. So, Athlete IP and Iphofil share a prime location in the Makili area. We are just near the Venice Grand Canal Mall and we are just a few minutes away from the Iphofil office. So, our office is located in the CIP building. So, who are we? As can be seen on the slide, Athlete IP was founded in 2009 with its headquarters located in Hong Kong. And subsequently, it has established branches in Beijing, Macau, Taiwan, Singapore, Philippines, and Malaysia. We also have representative offices in the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. So we are more than 80 employees over the group. So why actually IP? So we, of we, we offer affordable price with no hidden costs. So our pricing is budget friendly and in fact for we offer a special discounted rate for all customers associated with Amazon. So later on I'll explain that. And then we offer global protection, you may seek protection of your trademark and intellectual property across 185 jurisdictions. We offer free trademark search aided with dating software. So aside from conducting manual searches in the intellectual property offices databases, we also utilize we also utilize a um a leading software for trademark matters. And we also rank number one in terms of filing volume in Hong Kong. This is a testament of our expertise in the field and also our commitment to excellence. And we also offer professional and personal advice. This is free of charge, so you may inquire as many questions. Hello. So you may you may take any inquiries, and it's free of charge. So we are a member of the International Trademark Association, or INTA, since 2017. INTA is a globally recognized organization that brings together professionals and experts in the field of trademarks. And with this membership, it enables us to stay at the forefront of the industry trends, updates, and developments. So for our services, we offer comprehensive wide range of services for trademark, patent, and copyright. So for the Philippines, you may register your trademark in the Philippines for as low as 10,000 pesos. This is already inclusive of the official fees in the IFO field, as well as our professional fees from filing up until the issuance of your certificate of registration. But this is exclusive of the 12% VAT and for the potential fees that may be associated for filing responses to the office actions, if any. For the U.S., you may register your trademark in the U.S. for as low as USD 625. This is a special date for Amazon sellers. So as you can see, here is a comprehensive wide range of our services in the Philippines. So basically, this is for the uh, protection of your trademark from prosecution and even for litigation. So this is also our services for U.S. trademark registration. Okay. 
So for the for the Amazon, we have actually a lot of clients who have who have successfully gained access on the Amazon platform. So here are some here are the samples. And here's the our QR code. So if you have any queries, please feel free to scan this QR code. That's it. Um, thank you for your time and attention. Your presence in this presentation made this um, experience truly really remarkable. Thank you. Okay, so before we move on to the Q and A segment, uh, I would actually like to, uh, everyone to help us with a very short survey in order for us to improve our future events. So uh, please kindly help to scan the QR code and provide your feedback to us. It's very important. Uh, your feedback is actually very important to us, and that that actually will tell us whether should we run more of such uh, in-person events. So I'll take a few uh, minutes to pause here first. 